Go ahead and like and share this on Facebook so that others might join us in worship. Even though we are worshiping from a distance, we are still here to give praise to our God. myself. Uh, my name is Reverend Danielle Bridgeforth, and I have the pleasure of serving as a senior pastor here at the Church of Clarendon in Arlington, Virginia. Uh, we have a small but mighty team with us. We are under the 10 number. We have six people in our sanctuary this morning, and we are all excited about being able to worship together and worship along with you. Our call to worship this morning it will come from Psalm 150. Psalm 150 out of the NIV says, Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him for His in the mighty heavens. Praise Him for His acts of power. Praise Him for His surpassing greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the harp and the lyre. Praise Him with the timbrel and dancing. Praise Him with the strings and pipe. Praise Him with the clash of the cymbals. Praise Him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Whether you're watching over the computer screens or you're right here with us this morning, if you have breath, praise the Lord. Oh, praise Him. Turn your ear to heaven and hear the noise inside, the sounds of angels all and the sounds of the angels songs and all this for a king.
this morning, we are grateful that you are with us, and we affirm that we believe you are holy and sovereign and great and greatly to be praised. So even as we go into this time of worship, we're not all in the same room as we are used to being, but yet we are all in your presence, and we know that you abide with us wherever we are. So God, will you lead and guide us in this time of worship? Speak to our hearts and our minds, strengthen and encourage our spirits, bring clarity where there may be confusion, bring wisdom where there may be doubt. Help us, Lord God, to turn our eyes away from our circumstances, our problems, our predicaments for just a few moments and to focus on you. For you are holy and you are the one that we need. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, again, good morning and welcome to worship today. We're so excited to have you with us even through these virtual means. Again, my name is Danielle Bridgeforth and I have the pleasure of serving as a senior pastor at the church at Clarendon here in Arlington, Virginia, right in the heart of Clarendon. I want to give you just a few um, announcements and notes um, regarding how we're going to be handling things for the next several weeks. If you have not already gone to our website, it's important that you please check that regularly. Um, that's www.1bc.org. Um, for all of our members and friends, that's the way that you will stay connected and stay up to date on what's happening and how our church is transitioning during this time. Um, I posted a very detailed letter yesterday yesterday, letting you know how we're going to be moving forward in these next several weeks. I was excited this morning to be able to uh, jump into a couple of uh, small groups that were meeting for uh, Experiencing God. I was just able to say hello, so I was glad that those groups were meeting, and I know that some of the other groups um, will be meeting on Wednesday night. I will tell you one of the interesting things. Uh, one of the groups I sat with this morning has some older members, and pretty much when I went to that Zoom meeting, it was everybody's phone number. And and then the other group had a lot of young people and all the video were there. And so that just lets us know that whether you're young or old or in between, we can all connect with God and with one another, even during this time of transition. And so we want to encourage you to please do that, get connected, as well as checking our um, website. I also want you to please follow us on Facebook and on YouTube at the Church at Clarendon. That way you can know when we're posting services and when we're making videos and things like that so that we can just stay connected. And so even now as we are going to be preparing ourselves in a few moments for prayer, I want to invite you to go ahead and start sending those prayer requests in. Um, if there are people, family situations that you want um, us to pray about this morning, please go ahead and write that into the comments so that when we get to our time of prayer, we'll be able to lift those up, and not only this morning, but also throughout this week. Um, I want to also let you know um, that we are ask asking that you would please continue to give during this time. Um, it's very important that our church stay strong so that we will be able to minister to our community and our congregation as well as to the broader community. And so the information of texting to give and giving online is there. And I believe also the, uh, the link will be in the comment section um, of the video so that you will know how to give and we can continue to make sure our ministry stays strong. We know that this has impacted all of us. And so we just want you to do what's right and what's best and what you can but continue to live generously as we've been talking about for the for the past several months because we know that God always meets our generosity with more generosity. I do want to also just take a moment um, to just thank God for those who are here with us, some from our multimedia team, from our worship team who've come out this morning. Yesterday, Stephen and I were here going over things. He thought, uh, he thinks I'm crazy anyway, but I was a little frantic yesterday trying to make sure everything was set up. Um, but it's really good to have the support that we have, um, especially during this time of challenge. And that's why it's so important for you to stay connected to us and to your community um, so that you don't feel isolated and alone during this difficult time. As we prepare ourselves for prayer, um, let me lift some prayer requests that I have. I want us to continue to pray for, of course, all of those who are sick 
and ill and have been impacted by the coronavirus. Not only those individually um, who have contracted the virus, but also family members who are caring for them. We have family members who have to have been quarantined because their family member has um, been impacted. Um, we're really concerned about our seniors, especially those who are in nursing homes and assisted living. They were already somewhat disconnected, but now in most places, family can't even come and visit them. And so we know that that's having a great psychological impact upon us. We want to pray for our elderly. We want to pray for our children and for those who are the most vulnerable among us. I've been on so many uh, web webinars and phone conferences this week, but uh, earlier this week I was on a call with a pastor, or a doctor I should say, and he was saying now is just not the time to be sick at all. If you have allergies, you just have diabetes or anything, it's so important that you stay well. And so we really want you to take care of yourself, to follow what the CDC and the World Health Organization and our government is saying so that we can stop the spread of this. We also want to remember our college students. Most colleges have shut down and sent students out, um, but there are some students who don't have anywhere to go when school closes early, and so they're housing and food insecure and don't have access to technology. We also want to be praying for our teachers and our principals, administrators, and school boards who are making very tough decisions during this time. And of course, for all parents and uh, our new homeschool teaching parents uh, who are dealing with that transition, as well as for the students uh, who are dealing with a, a new teacher uh, midway through the school year. We all know that's a little bit difficult. So we pray that this can be a time of fun and a time of creativity, even while it is a time of challenge. Uh, we also want to remember uh, our governmental and political officials on all levels, uh, local, state, national, even for our world. So many countries are impacted, so we're praying for China, for Korea, for Italy, for France, for all of Europe, and uh, for many other countries, of course, for every state in our country that has been impacted by the coronavirus, and so let's remember all of them. Um, let's also remember our healthcare providers, first responders, nurses, firefighters, police officers, our military personnel serving domestically and abroad, um, those who are seeking to transition but can't because there's been a moratorium on leaving and going, and so this is impacting life on every level. And we want to just make sure that we also remember that being at home and working at home is not good for some people because their home situation is not secure. And so let's pray for those who are touched by poverty and domestic violence and who are really under added pressure because they're not able to get out of the house during those certain hours of the day that they're used to. And of course, for all of us, our church, our community, our world, we want to remember to pray for the mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual well-being of us all. This is a time for us to be the church even more than we ever have before. And you can be the church wherever you are, just by being loving, by being generous, by being compassionate, by being kind, and by being a listening ear. You might not be able to reach out and touch someone physically, but you can still touch them with your prayers and you can touch them with your kindness. And I'll pause now and let you lift your quiet prayer requests or continue to put our prayer requests in the comment section right before we pray. Great is thy faithfulness, O God our Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not, and thy compassions, they fail not. Great is thy faithfulness. this morning, even just taking you up on the invitation that you have given us to come boldly before that throne in our time of need, and you've promised us that we can find mercy and help when we come to you. And so God, we are stretching our hands and our faith towards you, God. We're in various places, in our homes, uh, on our jobs, uh, on our phones, on our computers, 
but God, we are all connected through the power of prayer. God, you've heard the list of requests, the things that I've uttered, and the things that have been lifted quietly by all of us individually. And God, we just want to reaffirm that we trust you, and we know that you are sovereign and well able to take care of us in this time. So for those who are the most vulnerable, for those who are older, who are dealing with illness and sickness and chronic conditions, for those who have already contracted, God, the coronavirus, we're asking, Lord, that you would show up in their lives, in their homes, in their families, and let them feel your strength and your presence. We call upon you as Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals us from all manner of sin, sickness, and disease. We also ask, God, that you would give comfort and peace to the many families who have lost loved ones throughout this pandemic. Those, God, who are in ICUs right now fighting for their lives. Lord, let your strength meet them. And even if they don't know what to do, let them know that you, Lord, will just be with them. And then show them others who will also be with them. God, we're praying for every area of our country and our world, financially, the education system, corporate America, our hospitals, our schools. Every element of our lives has been impacted. We remember those in the service industry, in the restaurant industry, those who uh, are used to doing um, nails and eyebrows and those kind of things, and people aren't doing that now. And so we pray, Lord, that you would help us to join together and to be generous so that there is minimal loss of employment and minimal impact regarding financial implications here, God. We're trusting that you can open up new ways for us to uh, make money and new ways for us to be able to be employed. I believe, God, that you would uh, re uh, reinvigorate our dreams during this time, stuff that we put on the back burner, said we didn't have time to do. But now, God, you will let those creative juices flow so that we'll be able to be a help to our own family as well as to our community. God, we trust you. We thank you. Keep us strong. And for those who are weak, let them know that we can find our strength in you and in one another. Let peace be throughout our land. Keep us mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually sane and sound. And most of all, God, just continue to be God. We trust you and we thank you, even for the challenge, because we believe it's another opportunity for us to see you and know you better. This is our prayer lifted in confidence in the name of Jesus. Amen. Blessed be your name, the land that is plentiful, where streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place.
let's pray. God, we thank you now for these moments of preaching and teaching. We ask that you would center us on your spirit, that you would open our hearts and our minds to your word. Pray that this word would be effective, that it would meet us right where we are, and it would help us in our current situation. God, I've prepared, and I've studied, and I've prayed. But if you don't speak, God, all of that will be for now. So I give myself to you, and I ask, Lord, that you would preach through me a word that will meet your people and help us to keep on keeping on. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Our sermon this morning is coming from the book of 2 Kings. Book of 2 Kings, Old Testament book of 2 Kings, chapter 4. I'm going to read verses 1 through 7 from the NIV. 2 Kings 4, verses 1 through 7. It says, The wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that he revered the Lord. But now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. Elisha replied to her, how can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a small jar of olive oil. Elisha said, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the doors behind you and your sons. Pour oil into all the jars, and as each is filled, put it to one side. She left him and shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her, and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, bring me another one. But he replied, there is not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. She went and told the man of God, and he said, go, sell the oil, and pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what is left. For the moments that are ours, with your patience, your concentration, and your prayers, I want to speak with you from the topic, the theme, the subject, crisis management. Crisis management. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the collective meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and redeemer. Crisis management. Uh, last week's sermon, um, I started with a story that I remembered at the end of service because my brother told me that I didn't tell you the end of it. Uh, and so I'm going to say the story again, and I promise to tell you how it ends. But it really is a perfect introduction to what I'm talking about today. Because as we know, we sometimes find ourselves in a crisis. I, I told you that uh, several years ago, I took a group of two teenagers that were from my youth group back to my alma mater, my undergrad alma mater, James Madison University, go Dukes, uh, to view the campus. And after a long day of touring, we came back to the car to find that I had not one, but two flat tires. Uh, one of my uh, college classmates was with me, and so I had uh, a roadside service, and we called them, and they told us they would come in about an hour, but they let us know that they would only change one tire. And so we figured, we're young, we're, in, we're, we're, we're strong, so we jumped right in to start to change the one tire while we waited on the other, uh, on the service people to come. And my friend, he starts to pump up the, the car, you know, on the jack, and after just a few moments, the car slipped and fell off the jack. Everything was really okay because it, the car hadn't been lifted up very, very high, and so we just were like, whew. All of a sudden, my friend who was still kneeling down, he looks up to me very calmly, and he says, the car is on my hand. It was at that moment that I realized that my very unfortunate situation had elevated to the place of being a crisis. Uh, in the moment, I went crazy, I'm trying to tell y'all, and you wouldn't believe it, but the three of us, me and the two teenagers that I was with, we lifted up my car off of my friend's hand, 
Because when you're in a crisis, you have to move quickly. But the number one thing that you and I need in order to manage our crisis is our faith. You don't need me to tell you that a crisis can occur unexpectedly. Um, as it did in my story, we can find ourselves in a crisis at, to no fault of our own. However, situations and issues can also be allowed to elevate to the level of a crisis when they're ignored or disregarded for too long. Situations and habits, problems, which we refuse to confront can end up being a bigger mess than God ever intended them to be in our lives. Crises can come upon us as individuals, or even as we're experiencing now as a, as a country and as a world, crises can impact us as a community. A crisis is a situation, simply put, that has to change, and it has to change quickly. The issue, however, is when we find ourselves in a crisis, what do we do? Too often we lose our minds, we are shaken off of our bearings, we feel alone and without strength. And I wanted to come by this morning and affirm for you and explain to others that God does not desire our crises to cause us to lose hope in ourselves, to lose faith in God, or to lose love for one another. Let me say that again. In our time of crisis, God does not desire us to lose hope in ourselves, to lose faith in God, or to lose our love for one another. Instead, when we are in a crisis, God desires that we would manage our crisis through our faith. God wants us to be able to still see and understand that even in the midst of a crisis, there is an opportunity for us to learn something about the nature and the character and the ability of God. God will show up right in the middle of your problem as long as we are able to keep our faith and keep looking at God. Now, I'll let you know, this is going to be a two-part sermon because it's a lot of information and I don't want to lose your attention. And so this morning, I want to share with you one thing I see from our text that this widow did that we should do if we are going to be able to manage our crises. Uh, but let me show you, first of all, that this woman, apparently from our text, was someone who was in a good reputation. She had been married to a man who had a good reputation. She ha had good standing in the community, and let us, yet and still, she now found herself and finds herself in a crisis. And I bring that up because it's so important for us to remember um, that a crisis is no respecter of persons. It, it doesn't matter about your pedigree, your education, your financial status. It doesn't matter how good you are, how long you've known the Lord, what color your skin is, or what your political preferences might be, all of us can be hit by a, a crisis. All of us can find ourselves in situations where things aren't going the way we want and need them to go. But when you're in a crisis, your faith will help you to endure and to manage it. The first thing I see in our text that I want to share with you this morning that this widow did to manage her crisis is that we need to request God's perspective. When you're in a crisis, you have to pause and ask God for God's perspective. In our text, uh, the prophet Elisha represents God to the people. Uh, back in that culture, uh, the man of God was the one who could hear and interact with God face to face. I'm so glad that we're not living under the Old Testament system anymore because now because of Jesus, we can all go to God for ourselves. Amen. But I want you to see in the text that Elisha represented God. And so when this woman had a crisis, uh, her husband has died. Her creditors are coming after her, and they just don't want her credit score and her money. They're going to take her sons and make them work off the debt of her dead husband. She doesn't try to figure it out on her own. She goes to God. She seeks God's perspective on her situation. And quite honestly, if you will be honest, I will be honest. A lot of times what happens when we get tight into situations that are difficult, we don't always think about our faith. We don't always consider what would God want. We let our wheels start spinning and we start trying to be strategic and creative and innovative. And while there's a place for all of that, the first place to go 
is to God. We have to seek God's perspective, request God's perspective so that we can get God's mind about whatever our situation or circumstance might be. During the time of a crisis is not the time to be distracted and distressed. It's not the time to abandon or neglect the things about your faith that have helped to carry you through the good seasons. In fact, let me tell you three ways that you can request God's perspective in the midst of your crisis. The first thing you can do is just continue to have your times of devotion and read the word of God. God's word always reveals to us God's mind and God's heart. In this day and time which we're living now, uh, we need to be able to go to God's word and find help. Uh, we need to have a devotional, have something on our phones that will encourage us and focus us around God's word. Because as I often say to you all here at the church at Clarendon, we have to deal with the facts of our lives. But the truth of who God is and the truth of God's word always trumps facts. Truth trumps facts. God is sovereign. God is able. And when we continue to go to the word of God, even in our time of crisis, we'll get God's perspective and we'll gain strength to keep on going. But not only in our time of crisis can we request God's perspective by going to the word, but secondly, we have to remember to keep praying. Prayer is a way to open up the, uh, open up our hearts and our spirits to God's spirit. Uh, Jesus said in the, in the book of Luke that we ought to always pray and never give up. So it doesn't matter how hard the situation is. It doesn't matter what the facts of the circumstance are. We are not without hope and help because we can always always lift our voice and our hand and our heart to God in prayer. Prayer is a great resource. The Word of God is a great resource, but God is our inexhaustible source. And that's a really important reminder because some of us are so used to looking to ourselves as our source. Um, even if we don't uh, mean to, uh, we look to our bank account and to our education to try to take care of us. Um, we look to our connections and who we know and where we can go to try to get us through the difficult times in life. But there are times when things will happen just like what we're enduring, when all of us will be on the level playing field and what we'll have is our faith. So going to the Word of God and prayer are two ways that we can request God's perspective during our crisis. And thirdly, I want to encourage us to continue to praise God even in our time of need. Praise is a tremendous, is a tremendous um, opportunity for us to distract and to, I should say, refocus ourselves away from the bigness of our problem and put it on the largeness of our God. When we praise God, we elevate God above whatever we may be going through. It doesn't mean that the problem isn't still there. It just means that we acknowledge that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Praise is our weapon, and if we will praise God in the the midst of the circumstance, uh, then the enemy will be confused. The enemy thinks you're going to give up. The enemy thinks you're going to quit. The enemy thinks that you're going to be knocked back on your feet. But even if you have to get knocked back on your feet, when you can go on your knees and lift your hands in praise, then you are stronger and you are better able to handle whatever your crisis is. Through our praise, we can draw closer to God. And if we draw closer to God, we draw closer to God's power, we draw closer to God's provision, we draw closer to God's perspective, and we draw closer to living out the purpose that God has for our lives. If you want to manage your crisis, my brothers and my sisters, you have to remember to request God's perspective. Because God already knew what was going to happen before we did. Uh, there's been some debate about when exactly our government and our leaders knew about this pandemic and, and whether they paid as much attention as they should have. And, and we don't know the answer to that. But we know that nothing catches God off guard. God knew, God knows, and God is with us and wants to help us. And so this morning, I simply want to encourage you to request God's perspective about your life. Don't leave God out. Don't try to figure it out on your own. Go to God in prayer. Go to God by studying God's word. Go to God by putting on your praise music and focusing your mind on the truth, which is a bigger than the facts of your life today. Because if you will do this, then you'll get God's perspective and God will be able to help you to manage your crisis. 
That's all I want to say today. Uh, so next week we'll finish up with this sermon. But I want to thank you for coming and, to, and for being a part of our worship service this morning. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this word and for how you have reminded us that even in the midst of our crisis and our problem, you are with us and you are for us. Thank you that we don't have to figure things out on our own. Thank you that we don't have to be strategic or creative or innovative enough to know what to do. We can simply come to you and you will show us the places and the people and the things that we need to do. Just like Elisha did for the woman in our text. She didn't have the answer, but she went to God and God gave her the answer. And we believe, Lord, that you are still in the answering business. And so help us to see you and to seek you, even in our time of crisis. Amen.